Welcome to this reading. It's for the first deacon of Gemini. That's between 21 of May and 31 of May. We know we have Mercury as the ruler of uh, Gemini and the card associated from Tarot is the lovers. But for this period we have the subruler Jupiter and the card associated from Tarot is the Wheel of Fortune. We know about uh, Gemini, that's very much a sign of uh, intellect. We have the mind, the uh, air sign, a lot of communication because of this uh, two twins here, the Castor and Paulus, and the duality that they bring. For a good communication, we need to have flexibility. This is a mutable sign. We get this uh, Jupiter that we will think uh, as a planet that it's supposed to be happy in uh, Gemini, but Gemini already has a lot of ideas and a lot of plans and it has to focus on a lot of things. Jupiter is not very happy in uh, Gemini, he's far from home, 180 degrees, so it's what we call in detriment. So his energy, like the energy that we can feel it in Sagittarius. It's like combining the fire of Sagittarius with the air of Gemini, so we get a very hot, <laughs> hot situation. Uh, and then I mentioned the Wheel of uh, Fortune, that the card is associated with Jupiter. And if we look at the card of Tarot that is associated with Jupiter in Gemini, the, in this uh, deck it's called the Dreamer 8, we see somebody who seems to be trapped in the middle of the Wheel of Fortune. And here it's called Web of Mirrors. Card of being trapped in your own mindset or feeling trapped. Mostly it's about feeling trapped, but it's more in the mind, in the thought world. And a very good um, card, I think, to express that even better. Is this card of Jupiter and uh, Mercury. It's like uh, here Jupiter is the teacher with um, Sagittarius and then Mercury is the one who still has a lot of to learn in this uh, Gemini sign but it's willing to learn and uh, that's a good aspect of this um, combination. And if we look at the classical tarot, we see this woman who trap because her eyes are fold, her arms are um, not free and she's surrounded by these eight uh, swords. Of course there is a way out, she cannot see it, she cannot um, find it yet. She is um, in a place where we see that, that the water is coming and if we look here in the back we see a castle that looks in a way like the Mont Saint-Michel and for those of you who ever visit the place you know that this place is surrounded by water but the place as such is built in a harmonious way with the nature because it's uh, safe even if the waters go up um, it will not they will not reach the, the castle and she is now, let's say, in a place where the water can come and arise. It's an extra danger to the situation. If we see the tarot before, indeed, somebody put her there in this place. Of course, we consider this as more as a mental prison, but it's also a prison due to the fact that uh, we are not in harmony with the nature anymore. We are trying to modelate the world according to our own thoughts instead of looking around and see how nature deals with things and how to learn an harmonious and balanced way of living from nature and such. So she got there and of course she is alone because we have the lover card and here like the person is alone without her soul partner. And if we look from uh, behind, we see that the sun is coming. So she can find her way out in, in time, it seems from this uh, card. 
and then we see the tarot after when like I want like to see love will uh, make you free and that her partner comes and help her using one of the swords that is all around her so she could have even free her hands if we look better here she had time to free her hands and the idea is that when you cannot see when you feel that you are trapped like your senses uh, some senses you cannot use them then maybe you have to go within and find a solution there and but first you have to admit that you are in a trap situation you don't know where to go and what to do and then start asking questions start hoping for uh, your intuition to show you the the way out and the solution will arise using your um, inner knowledge and i think that's what this uh, teacher with the student is here that sometimes you have to do just hard work it doesn't seem to be a very spiritual or enlightened we can imagine they are somewhere in a temple but by doing this kind of activities in peace in harmony with the surroundings your inner knowledge is growing and this is what a teacher can teach you in the end because it's not about teaching what he knows but it's more like um, teaching you how to find the knowledge in in yourself and if we go back to this dreamer uh, eight i would like to read the nice poetry that comes with a card for when we wave a web of thoughts of eats and shoots and coulds and odds and fears of what the other seem we make a prison of our dream she seems afraid of how other people are seeing her with this web of mirrors so she you are trapped in your mind you see complications but of course there is a way out and number eight it's a number of mastering you are on your way to master maybe even how to use the wheel of fortune or how to accept it or to work with it you are not alone first of all even if it seems hard you can there is a lot to learn from it and you can you can get out of this prison and in another uh, deck the angel tarot uh, deck this um, eight of swords becomes eight of air it's an air sign and we see this card talks about illusion of being trapped because it's an illusion a lack of self-confidence afraid to take action but this unicorn here like here one sword is used to free yourself this unicorn here he just refused to uh, feel trapped anymore and he breaks free and then uh, he's no more controlled by the the pack mentality he can be also an an example for the others by showing them uh, a way out the others can follow of course if they uh, choose to do it like always i like to go to my um, beneath the moon book and the tarot card the eight of swords here is associated with the story of uh, donkey skin great story for for this card about a handsome king who had a donkey whose droppings were gold the king married the most beautiful woman in all the world and they even had a daughter and they live in peace but when the queen was dying she asked her, her king to promise her not to marry again unless his new wife was as beautiful as she was the king as well decided to keep this promise and then he looks for a new wife he cannot find it and the only one who's as beautiful as his uh, wife is the daughter so then he wants to marry his own daughter the daughter um, tries to push him away by asking for all kind of uh, impossible demands like a dress as bright as the sun a dress as mysterious and the moon and a dress as brilliant and the stars but she gets all this from so she gets the star she gets the moon she gets the sun from her father in a way but then in the end she asked for the skin of the donkey who was dropping gold and even that her father is uh, willing to 
give to her, showing how determined, how trapped he was in his own conviction that he can create the world in the way he wants. So at that point, the girl has nothing else to do than to just use the donkey skin as a cloak and took her three dresses into a magical walnut and ran away. She found a place in um, another kingdom where she worked at the kitchen of the royal castle. And from time to time, she will wear her beautiful dress. And during one of these times, the local prince saw her fall in love with her. He got sick. He didn't want to eat anything. Only what she was cooking in the kitchen uh, was good enough for him. At one point, finds a ring in his food. And then he realized that it's from the one that he loves. And this is the way she he finds his princess. And of course, they marry she gives up her uh, donkey skin. So the harmony and the balance is back once they all get out of their own trapped mind. The princess is trapped in the belief that the past is also determining her future. The prince is trapped in his love. We see here a lot of examples, but also for some of the characters in the story, a way out of this uh, mind prison because all of them are actually free none of them is really in in a real prison it's all about what others are thinking the mirrors that um, we see all around us in the and the thoughts that we create ourselves i'm going to do a reading with uh, an animal uh, kin uh, oracle this reading is going to be to show you the power, a power animal card, a spirit animal card, and the shadow animal card. Uh, first, the power animal card, which represents the, the core of whatever issue you have at this point. And that's the elephant. This is a card about compassion. And in the same time, the symbol here, it's the symbol of self. When I was talking here about the love that will make you free, it can also be love for yourself. And that starts with compassion and understanding for yourself. And it makes me also think of an interesting story that I'm following uh, lately about two elephants that were their whole life in captivity, never really saw uh, the grass. And now... Um, they are somewhere in a sanctuary and they are slowly, slowly, they are now free, but they have to learn how to, to trust. And even if you let them out of, in, the, in a while, they will go back to, to the safe place they know. And then slowly, slowly, they remember that this is the place that, where they really belong. And every day they are more and more out in the wild and uh, it's the story of a lot of us that we need to free ourselves from the prison that we created about what is important in life maybe we need to be more of us as the, this unicorn that is breaking free so this is the the power animal here the elephant and then we look for a spirit animal that will can be a positive energy and the positive energy is the energy of the butterfly and the one who, of course, brings change. Again, a spirit card. So it's about the change. It's coming from, from inside. A good card for the spirit animal. And the shadow animal card. It's about any kind of fears of negative influence that you need uh, to heal at this point. And that's the card of... Uh, barrier and protection and it's again a spirit card you think you need to feel protected to fear that you are not safe which is totally understandable in the times we are living now and even when we think about energies we feel we need to be protected but I believe that um, and I trust that once we are light once we change once we find compassion once we break free once we find love true love in ourselves and, in, and even then we can experience with people around us this protection it's no necessarily uh, needed and now I see even the cards are a 40 a 42 and then a 44 so that the real uh, 
master number here, the, the 44, which it's not a coincidence. We said that 4 was like for Jupiter, 44 is an 8. So 2 times 4 is an 8. This is also once we manage to cover the fear, we can stand up for what we love and we can protect the things we work hard for, the things we love. And with this, I uh, wish you all the best and thank you for watching.